St. Lawrence O'Toole was Archbishop of Dublin, Ireland, and a great force of peace during a tumultuous time. In those days, many of the people of Dublin didn't take their Christian religion very seriously. Lawrence encouraged them to become real Christians. He continued to care for the poor, especially homeless children. He made room for them in his own house, and they shared the food at his table. Lawrence was notable for his talents as a peacemaker, which made him acceptable to all elements in society. He was born in 1128 and named Lorson Uatuathal. He was the son of Murtaugh, the king of the Murray. When Lawrence was 10 years old, a neighboring clan attacked and invaded. His father had to concede defeat. It was common practice in those times for princes of one clan to be given as hostages to another clan as a guarantee of peace. When Lawrence was 10 years old, he was given as hostage to Dermot, the king of Leinster. For two years, Lawrence was sent in chains to a remote place where he got very little to eat. He hadn't even enough clothes to keep him warm in the winter. For two years, even though he was a king's son, he learned what it was like to be poor and to be oppressed. When Murtaugh heard of this, he threatened vengeance unless the boy was handed over. After two years, it was agreed that Lawrence would be released. He was sent to a monastery at Glendalough, and the monks made him welcome. He was supposed to wait there till his father came to collect him. But Lawrence soon came to love Glendalough. He liked joining the monks in prayer. After his two years as a hostage, he realized that wealth and power were not important. He felt very close to God in Glendalow. He asked his father's permission to stay there and become a monk, and his father agreed. Lawrence was raised and educated by the bishop. When he was still only 25, Lawrence was elected abbot of the monastery. Lawrence was a charitable and wise leader. He kept the doors open for the poor and sick. When there was a famine in the area, Lawrence sold some of the treasures of Glendalough to provide food for those who were hungry. When the Archbishop of Dublin died in 1161, Lawrence was elected to replace him. His election was supported by the High King and the community of Glendalough, but also warmly welcomed by the population of Dublin itself. Sorry for interrupting the video. I am here to deliver a quick message. If you think our channel has given you $5 worth of knowledge, then can you take a moment to make a donation? Please don't skip the video. 99.8% of our viewers simply skip this, or many think they will donate later and forget. If you make a small donation now, then we can keep making good videos like this one. You can choose to support us through Patreon or make a one-time donation through PayPal. The links are given in the description box below. If you are one of our rare donors, we warmly thank you. You have shown the world access to good content matters to you. Thanks again, and God bless. In those days, many of the people of Dublin didn't take their religion very seriously. Lawrence encouraged them to become real Christians. 
He brought monks to Dublin from France, and they helped many people to come back to Mass and to the sacraments. Lawrence himself never forgot his own days of poverty. He continued to care for the poor, especially homeless children. He made room for them in his own house, and they shared the food at his table. Known for his personal self-denial, he wore a hair shirt under his clerical robes, made an annual 40-day retreat in St. Kevin's Cave, never ate meat, fasted every Friday, and never drank wine, although he would color his water to make it look like wine to avoid attracting attention to himself during meals. In 1171, he traveled to Canterbury, England, on diocesan business. On the following day, as the Holy Archbishop was advancing to the altar to officiate, a lunatic who had heard much of his sanctity and who thought it would be a gift to the church to make him another martyr in the likeness of St. Thomas Becket, struck him a violent blow on the head. Everyone in the church thought Lawrence had been killed by the severe blow to the head. But the saint recovered his senses and asked for some water. He then prayed and blessed the water. He then requested that the wound be washed with it. When they washed the wound, the bleeding suddenly stopped. The bleeding stopped immediately and the archbishop celebrated the mass. He requested the king to pardon the offender, and he eventually became his follower. Lawrence fell sick while traveling to England to meet with Henry II and returned to Ireland in very critical condition. Before he died, Lawrence was asked what he wanted to leave his heirs in his will. And he replied, God knows I have not a penny in the world. Lawrence had truly embodied the care and stewardship of a shepherd and had given all he had to his beloved people of Dublin. His tomb is in the crypt under the collegial church at Yew. Many people still go there to pray. Lawrence was canonized in 1225. He has a place in the painted calendar of saints canonized in the 13th century in the Basilica of the Four Crowned Martyrs at Rome. St. Lawrence O'Toole, Irish bishop who endured violence to lead the Irish people to deeper faith. Pray for us. Hello, viewers. Here are some quick updates about our ongoing productions. We have been losing supporters because of the current economic conditions, but don't worry. We will be releasing the next episode from the Miracles of Mary series, Our Lady of Lord, in the next few weeks. As for stories of saints, we have released four videos in the last month. We have also started a new channel, Saints for Adults, wherein we will feature some exclusive new shows as well. Kindly support us by subscribing to this channel. Thanks again, and God bless.